red heifer. That's the title of our lesson today, and I want to welcome you to Change Bible Study. I'm Chris Bailey, and we are in the book of Numbers, studying God's relationship to his people. And that journey from Egypt to Canaan, from captivity to the land of promise. Today we understand the Lord instituted another uh, service or another reminder of himself in Numbers 19. And in this chapter, that's where we find the red heifer. We're going to talk about that today and what that means today. So Lord, we ask that you will give us wisdom and a heart to understand your will and way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Numbers chapter 19 describes the system or this particular rite or service known as the sacrifice of the red heifer. And without going into detail, to summarize the whole thought, there was a red heifer sacrifice that had been given. And of course, the priesthood, the Levites were supposed to carry this out on behalf of the people. But the three basic things to remember about this heifer or this cow was that it had to be red. It also had to be without blemish and it had to have never been yoked or put burden upon it. Because remember, the yoke was what the, the oxen or the cattle would use to help do labor. These three qualifications are what had to be in place for that particular heifer to be used. It had to be red, it had to be without blemish, and it had to be unyoked. It's pretty obvious who this heifer and this heifer sacrifice symbolized. It symbolized Christ. Because in our verse for the day, which is in Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, and in verse number 12, the Bible says this, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. The verse there in verse 12, uh, without the gate, dealing specifically or symbolically with what happened when Jesus died. When he was crucified on Calvary, he was taken outside of Jerusalem. He was taken outside of the city. And there was a reason for that. This red cow, without blemish, and it had never been yoked, was sacrificed outside of the city. The Lord wanted to make it plain to Israel then and to you today. Jesus did not die, just like this heifer did not die for one person. The Bible says that Jesus came to seek and save that which is lost. And it is my recollection that all of us have sinned. All of us are lost. So, when we hear the, the patriotic stanzas of liberty and justice for all, while we value these as a nation here in the United States, they find their birth and they find their origin from the heart of God. Because he established a kingdom of grace and liberty and freedom from sin for all. That's why this heifer symbolizes Christ as one who was red, made red, bloodied for our sin. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. He was without blemish. He was without fault. He was the one who qualified to be the sacrifice because he never fell prey to sin. He did not sin. But we also understand lastly that he was unyoked. He was unequivocal. He was untouchable. At the same time, he was the Lord. And it showed how he had been set aside to do nothing but serve us by sacrificing himself for us. And he did it for all of us. So, it's not coincidental that right after he establishes this priesthood and right after he shows them who and what they're to be, he presents Christ. Because ultimately, everything we do, remember, it's a gift for the Lord and it's a gift from the Lord. And it's all about the Lord. So friends, remember, liberty and justice for all is yours to experience. It's yours to claim. Do it today and let's continue to accept Jesus as our Lord and even our sacrificial Savior. So, Jesus, thank you for being our substitute. Help us now to be your substitute in a world that needs you. In your name we pray. Amen. Remember, friends, preach the gospel, and if necessary, use words. Until next time, please remember, the change is good.